volcanic uh, features. And of course, the famous pink cliffs of Bryce Canyon um, that uh, were deposited in, in lakes uh, in adjacent to the Rocky Mountain uplifts. And so now we have almost the full extent of the, of the not, not quite, but almost the full Atlantic. We can now start to see, you now don't need an explanation of what the, where the continents are. You, you can see, uh, if you look very carefully, here's the Rocky Mountains going up about uh, 55 or 60 million years ago. Uh, focusing in, uh, the earliest part of the Indian gene is called the Paleocene, about six, excuse me, about 60 million years ago. And here's the uplift of the Rocky Mountains, the Uintas, the Front Range, the, the San Juans, etc. And the Colorado Plateau is also uplifted, but not as much as the surrounding mountains. In fact, in southern Arizona, we had a mountain range that probably was even higher than the Rocky Mountains, uh, often called the Muggyone Highlands. I, I, I'd like to see a better name for these, but anyway, that doesn't matter because they're much more than islands. These were enormous mountains that shed rivers across the Colorado Plateau that actually ended up in the Bryce Canyon area up here. So here's where Bryce Canyon is today in this lake and, and swamp environment here. Uh, but still at fairly high elevation on the Colorado Plateau. So everything's coming up, everything, in this part of the world. And the Great Green River Formation, uh, uh, the uh, the people that study these rocks tell us that there is more energy locked up in these rocks than there is in the entire Middle East. The problem is it's tough to get out. These, of course, are the oil shales. And so this is where the oil shales form in these lakes up in, in uh, Utah and Wyoming and, and Colorado. Uh, there were some small lakes in the San Juan Basin just, uh, just uh, northeast of us here. And again, the Bryce Canyon area. Uh, in this area at the end of this lake, the southern margin of this lake. Again, big mountains in Arizona, southern Arizona. Then we get to uh, uh, the area's been uplifted, but still no Colorado River, at least still no through, through going to Colorado River uh, until we get into the ne Neogene in the last 23 million years. This is when our modern landscape was, was formed there, of course, in the peaks and, and Verde Valley um, in the Jerome area, the volcano on the side of Grand Canyon, and of course, just, just, just to show how geology works, uh, we know the age of this volcano. I can't remember the exact age. I'm going to say it's 500,000 years. I think it's a little bit younger than that. But whatever the age of Vulcan's throne is here, look at how Vulcan's throne, the volcanoes, completely fill in the Grand Canyon. So. Grand Canyon had to be there when that volcano went off. And so that gives us a minimum age then of Grand Canyon. So that's, that's an indication of how geologists can date various things by events like this. Um, uh, the landscape of the Four Corners here, all, all this was created in the last uh, five to seven to 10 million years or so. So uh, as we get to the Miocene, um, Basically, if you're in northern Arizona and you're in the Miocene, you're in basalts. So most of the black rocks in this part of the world, the dark basalts, formed uh, during the Miocene. Some formed about 15 million years ago, some formed 6 or 7 million years ago. Um, not to be confused with the peaks, the peaks still aren't in the picture yet. Uh, the volcanic lava flows around Flagstaff are much older than the peaks. They're five to six million years. The peaks we're going to find out are just only about half a million years. So, so we get all these lava flow deposits, a well-developed muggy on rim by this time. The edge of the Colorado Plateau is, and now the Colorado Plateau is going up while southern Arizona, Nevada, California, they're collapsing in the basin and ranges forming down here. And it's because of this breaking apart of the Earth's crust, that's how the lava that gets to the surface. It comes through the cracks in the Earth and spills out and forms these, these volcanoes. And so these are the ages of some of the volcanoes around Flagstaff. Again, not the peaks yet, but uh, the volcanic flows, Anderson Mesa, and, and uh, um, um, et cetera, et cetera, all the, all the mesas around Flagstaff that have those black, basaltic rocks on top that are four, five, six million years old, 
all the rocks down around Oak Creek Canyon, the volcanic rocks that cap the Oak Creek Canyon area of this age. So one thing you may have noticed is that the older volcanoes were here and now they're starting to move north. And of course, the last episode of vol volcanism will produce our San Francisco peaks. Uh, about six million years ago, we probably for the first time had a through growing going Grand Canyon. Uh, it's possible that water actually went all the way from Colorado to the Gulf of California, uh, if not by six million years, certainly by five and a half million years or so. And this is when the major carving of our modern Grand Canyon took place. There probably were still a series of lakes in the Colorado Plateau. There's one out here on the Navajo Hopi Reservation, um, a very well-developed uh, shallow lake deposit, uh, the Verde Formation formed down in, in Verde Valley and so forth. And of course, here's our present-day landscape, uh, everything intact as we understand and know it today. But keep in mind that this landscape has evolved over about 1.8 billion years and in a very complicated fashion. So I hope that, uh, that uh, going through this with you has helped you understand this landscape. And I'm gonna turn it over to Wayne one last time to wrap up. Thank you, Ron. Uh, you know, it's kind of incredible to think um, about what this all represents. I know it can be very difficult to sit out there in a darkened room <laughs> late at night after dinner and go through all these maps. But as you look at it in the book, you might ponder a few things, that this is really an example of change through time, and that's really the one big lesson that geology is all about. One other great lesson that you take from this, even if you are a creationist, and you believe that the Earth is 6,000 years old, this is the story of it. You can't argue with 18,000 feet of strata and what the strata actually represents from the environments it was deposited in. And I'll be very curious to understand how creationists might respond to this book. I think we can all predict how they might. But if you think about 18,000 feet of strata, that is exactly how it happened, even if it was 6,000 years ago. And Ron and I would just like to leave you with a very quick view of the North American view through time. And I'm going to show you a series of maps that go from the Cambrian 510 million years ago. There's the Red Wall limestone at 340, the Kaibab limestone at 300, I'm sorry, the uh, Subai at 312. There's the Kaibab limestone. We're moving through the Triassic. And look at how North America evolves and changes through time. This is the magic, really, of Ron Blakey's maps. As we look at these things, we can actually see North America evolve through time. And here's the Pliocene in the Verde Valley. And finally, one last one during the Ice Age, when ice covered North America. And we can just run through these backwards again, back in time towards the Cambrian. You can actually see our continent evolve through time. Africa will come in and create the Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> Ron and I have uh, an interest in perhaps creating a CD that would put most of his maps or these globes in motion and you could actually see this by watching in your television at home but that's a little bit down the line. Thank you all very much for coming.